Okay, we're told that f of x is a linear function, meaning a line, and we're also given a little information about this. We know that f of 3 is negative 2 and f of 8 is 1. Where I just asked, find the equation for this function. So I know we can use function notation. I typically just go back to think y equals mx plus b. All right, so what we'd want to do is we want to find the slope and the y-intercept. We can put f of x instead of y if we want to, though. So let's first find the slope. So I've gone ahead and given you the slope formula over here on the right-hand side. I'm going to use this version, the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now the information that we've been given is actually two ordered pairs. You can visualize these as. That's an x value and a y value. All right, input and output. So one ordered pair is going to be 3 comma negative 2. The other ordered pair is going to be 8, 1. Okay, and filling into that formula, I'm going to treat these as the sub 1s, these as the sub 2s. And to calculate the slope, that's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So our numerator is going to be 1 minus a negative 2 is 1 plus 2 makes 3. And then 8 minus 3 makes 5 for our denominator. Okay, the other component here, now that we have the slope, is we need to find the y-intercept. Now there are different versions of uh, line formulas we could utilize. I'm going to go back to the y equals mx plus b. So right now we know the slope. So we can say y equals 3 fifths x plus b. Just filling that in for the the m in the formula, but we need to find b. To do so, let's use one of these ordered pairs that we already are given, and let's fill in for x and for y. So if I went ahead and use, say, the second ordered pair, we have an x value of 8 goes along with a y value of 1. Let's fill that in. y value of 1, x value of 8. And now everything's numbers except for the b. So let's do a little bit of work and try to solve for b. So the first thing I'm going to do is combine the 3 fifths and the 8. These are being multiplied, so I can visualize the 8 as being in the numerator. I can always put that over 1. So at this point, let me think. We would multiply our numerators. 3 times 8 makes 24. And multiply our denominators, well, 5 times 1 makes 5. All right, next we want to move that fraction to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 24 fifths from both sides. That'll isolate the b and put that on the right hand side by itself. But to combine this 1 and the 24 fifths, I would like to have a common denominator. Well, I can rewrite 1 as 5 over 5 because 5 divided by 5 is equivalent to 1. And now that I have the common denominator, we're going to keep the common denominator and do the operations between the numerators. So 5 minus 24 makes negative 19 is going to be our value for b. Okay, putting these components back together, we now know b, and we know our m. So filling those both in, we could say y equals 3 fifths times x minus 19 fifths. A um, little bit of work, a little bit of practice with fractions and dealing with those. I understand that many of you may be looking at this and go, after I get to 3 fifths, that's the equivalent to I put it in my calculator and get 0.6. In this case, that would be perfectly fine because 0.6 is a nice terminating decimal that is exactly equal to 3 fifths. Now, you'd run into problems if you had like 3 sevenths or something like that. It isn't a nice terminating decimal. We want exact answers. So I want us to keep practicing, getting more and more comfortable with um, fractions, dealing with fractions. We're going to need them the entirety of this class. So good luck. Hope this helps out.